Hello, we're doing properties and multiplication today. It's going to be a little bit of vocabulary and some terms. Hopefully, we can make them make sense a little bit. Um, and we're going to try and be a little bit colorful on a dark black background. I don't know, maybe I'm like going Khan Academy on you or something. I don't know. So we're going to start with multiplication. We're going to talk about the commutative, associative, identity, zero, reciprocal, and negative one property of multiplication. All of these, again, it's a lot of vocabulary, but hopefully we can understand what they are and it makes sense and be able to identify what they look like. Some of them are a little bit more obvious and intuitive than others, and some of them we'll use a little bit more often than others. And I'll try and point that out as we go along. First off, the commutative property. Remember that addition is commutative, like A plus B is the same as B plus A. And the numbers commute or they move around. Multiplication is the same way. 3 times 6 is the same as 6 times 3. You probably already know that, but when we move numbers around, we can do that with addition or multiplication. Okay, you can't do that with subtraction. 6 minus 3 is not the same thing as 3 minus 6. So those ones won't work, but with addition and multiplication, they are commutative, so we can use that commutative property. So B times A is A times B, it's the same thing. And that's a property that you will see used quite often, and hopefully it can be used to help uh, make, make things a little bit easier for you um, if you can move numbers around and multiply them in whatever order you feel like you want to. Um, if you feel like it's easier to multiply by 10, do that first. You know, things like that that may make it a little bit easier. The associative property, remember with addition, we used the associative property, and that was when we added parentheses like this, but the letters stayed in the same order. So ABC, ABC. But in this one, we're adding AB first. In this one, we're adding BC first basically saying the same thing as the last one. You can add in any order that you want, and it's still going to give you the same number. Multiplication is the same. If I have 1 times 2 times 3, and 1 times 2 times 3, it doesn't matter which order I multiply them, I'm going to get 6 for an answer. And that's what the associative property tells us. You can use parentheses to change the order that you multiply things in, and that's okay. A times B times C, A times B times C, doesn't matter which order you multiply them as long as you uh, multiply all, all numbers. All right. The identity property. This one here for me is really easy to remember because, um, and it's also really simple, but we don't use it all that often. Um, think about when you identify yourself. It shows who you are, right? You show identification. This is who I am. Um, in math, it's, it's very similar to that, only a little more complicated, but basically the same. What can I multiply times 15 that will make 15 be itself? Sounds really complicated. Let's put it in math terms. 15 times 1 is 15. That's it. It's really this simple. Everything else is kind of like fluff. If you multiply any number times 1, you get that same number. It identifies itself. That's it. Okay, so it seems pretty simple. It really is that simple. Multiply a number times one, you'll get that number. This is the identity property. You can do that with fractions and negatives and positives and decimals and anything you want. You multiply it times one, you're going to get that number back again. Multiply a variable times one, you get that variable by itself. All right? The zero property is very similar. If you multiply a number, times 0, anything times 0, you get 0 for the result. This is called the zero property of multiplication. All right, for me, this is the easiest one to remember because you're multiplying times 0. It's the zero property of multiplication. It's like sort of embedded right into the word. So 1 times 0 is 0. 140 times 0 is 0. A times 0 is 0. A, B, C, D times 0 is 0. Again, you can do it with negative numbers, positive numbers, fractions. Anything times 0 is 0. And that is a 0 property. And we'll use that, um, use that from time to time. Actually, memorizing the, the term, probably won't use it very often. But knowing that when you multiply something times 0, you're going to get the result of 0 is something you'll see. You'll see throughout the course. 
The reciprocal property, this is the second last one, um, the reciprocal property is this. If I have a fraction one half and I multiply it by the reciprocal, which is the fraction flipped over, then I get the result of one. So there are lots of different examples that you could do to show this. I mean, it doesn't need to be with one. For example, if I said three over four times its reciprocal, four over three, it equals one. I don't have to do all the math to say three times four is 12, four times three is 12, 12 over 12 is one. I know if I'm multiplying a number by its reciprocal, the result is one every single time. And that's what it is. If you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you get one. You are going to use this quite a bit in the course later on when we're isolating variables, and we'll talk about that later, but you will actually use this. So you want to make sure to know if you multiply a number by its reciprocal, you get the value of one. All right. Our last property is the negative one property. Negative one property of multiplication says this. If you multiply times negative one, you will get the opposite. For example, negative one times three gives you negative three. So if you multiply a number times it negative one, you get the opposite. Negative one times x gives you negative x. All right? That property works that way. That's what it does. Okay, if you multiply something times negative one, you get the opposite. Now, this property, actually, we will use this quite a bit later on, and we use it mainly when you want to get rid of a negative. So we don't typically multiply negative one times a positive number and get a negative, because we don't like negatives. We're going to use it more when we want to get rid of a negative. Here's an example. If I have negative x is equal to negative 4, I multiply both sides by negative 1. And what does that do for me? Negative x times negative 1, I get the opposite or positive x. Negative 4 times negative 1 gives me the opposite or positive 4. And so I can get rid of, if x is equal to 4, the negative x is equal to negative 4. All right? If I multiply both sides by negative, it makes the negatives go away, basically. And that's where we're going to use this property later on. Okay, the negative one property. If we want to get rid of a negative, just multiply everything times the negative one on both sides of the equation, and you'll get rid of the negative x. And the reason we do this is typically you don't like to see a negative variable. Um, just, just standard notation. All right, now there is a lot to remember, but hopefully by making it colorful, it makes it more fun. Um, math vocabulary is not always the most fun part of math, but hopefully that, that lesson's been helpful to kind of lay things out for you. Have a wonderful day.